The women's tag team championships from their inception were something fans were excited about. However, as time has gone on, many folks are hoping to see the WWE abandon the concept entirely, as the titles just seem to be cursed. With injuries and poor booking plaguing the division for years, it seemed like the titles would never truly recover. However, one very notable difference between their inception and now is who we have in charge of creative in WWE. See, I said in a video a few months ago that Triple H is a huge fan of tag team wrestling, as evident by his time running NXT as well as his own tag team runs as an active performer. And that feeling doesn't stop with just the men's tag division. In fact, I'd wager as much as to say that the women's tag titles stand a reasonable chance to mean even more than the men's titles if we allow my homie Triple H to cook. So, that being said, today in this video, I'm going to present you with several examples and reasons why I believe Triple H is going to save the Women's Tag Team Championships. If you agree or disagree right off the bat, let me know in the comments down below. And let me know by the end of the video if I change your mind. And while you're headed down that way, it would help me out a ton if you consider leaving a like on the video, as well as subscribe for more videos just like this one. Alright, so to talk about how the titles are gonna be saved in the first place, let's briefly take a few minutes to overview what exactly Trips is saving the titles from. First and foremost, let's talk about history. The WWF Women's Tag Team Championships were originally created in May of 1983. However, in February of 1989, the titles were retired due to a lack of teams available to compete over said championships. In 2012, there were teasers on WWE.com talking about resurrecting the titles, specifically to see how the division would have looked in that year as well as the Bellaton specifically mentioned in interviews that they would love to see the WWE introduce Divas Tag Team Championships. A few years later in 2018, Stephanie McMahon would also be questioned about the titles and if they would ever exist, before saying, and I quote, Not quite yet, but that's absolutely something we've heard loud and clear from our fan base, and it's something we're keen on implementing as soon as we're able to. These rumblings and the concept of reviving the women's tag titles was something the larger WWE fanbase was super keen on during 2018. And as something of an early Christmas present, on December 24th, 2018, Vince McMahon would announce that the titles would be introduced in 2019. This materialized on Raw in one of Alexa's A Moment of Bliss segments, where she would reveal the belts as well as announce that six teams from Raw and SmackDown would compete over the titles inside of a Tag Team Elimination Chamber match to crown the inaugural champions. The teams would consist of Bayley and Sasha Banks, Carmella and Naomi, The Iconics, Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville, Nia Jax and Tamina, and finally the Riot Squad's Liv Morgan and Sarah Logan. Ultimately, the match would see the team of Bayley and Sasha become the inaugural Tag Team Champions in what was genuinely an extremely feel-good moment at the time. This first match, as well as the general idea of the division in that moment, had a lot of work to do in making these titles truly mean something. But by the same notion, they had a lot of promise. At minimum, at the very start, there were around 8-10 to 10 teams who could all viably compete over the gold, with some more tag-specific acts in there at the time. More particularly, I'm talking about the Iconics, who pretty much screamed heel women's tag team champions from the moment they entered the WWE system. This was the initial foundation of the division, and over the years, several tag teams have sprouted up to lay claim to the titles. If you were just looking at the lineage of the main roster tag titles, They've seen a total of 19 different teams who've held the gold, with the longest reigning champions being the Kabuki Warriors during their initial reign lasting 172 days. In addition to that, Asuka has held the titles on four separate occasions. Twice with Kyrie, of course, once with Alexa Bliss, and once with Charlotte Flair. However, during both times where she was with the Blondes, they were essentially just Franken teams. And what I mean by that is that they were just two women shoved together with Asuka, making for less of a tag team and more of just two singles acts working together and tagging out every so often. I use Asuka as the example here because it's a convenient segue, but generally speaking, the division for a large part of its history, including its inception which I just talked about, was a bunch of singles acts meshed together. Now, we've seen this a number of times in the men's tag division as well, however, that sort of thing was significantly more common during the Vince McMahon regime. You see teams like Seth Rollins and Jason Jordan as Raw Tag Champs, and generally speaking at that time, those titles weren't something valued super highly. Instead, they came to feel like props, which by technicality, all championships technically are just props until value is instilled into them. In the case of the men's titles, after Trips took over and the Usos were the undisputed tag champions, I'd argue that in my lifetime, the titles have never felt bigger. Was that partly because the Usos were on a generational and longest tag team reign in history? Maybe. Was that partly because the Bloodline story was the biggest thing in wrestling at the time? Also, maybe. 
Even still though, after those titles were taken off the Usos and went to Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens, and that trend continued when the Judgment Day won them too. Well, and then they went to Cody and Jay, and it was a bit goofy and perhaps not the best for the titles, but it only lasted a week before Finn and Damian picked them back up and further legitimized the titles through constant defenses and great matches. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, how does this relate to the ladies and their titles? It's really simple. Triple H is in charge now, and since his time running Raw and SmackDown, he has successfully rehabilitated the Intercontinental title, given us a second world title for top guys to chase down, as well as changed the looks of several titles to reflect a more prestigious and less toy-like look for them. I mentioned at the top of the video, but the guy is known to love some good tag team wrestling. There's a reason why there's a men's and women's Dusty Cup in NXT, and it's because he wanted tag team wrestling to be a featured presentation for guys and gals. Outside of that even, think of Black and Gold Era NXT with Undisputed Era, DIY, The Revival, AOP, American Alpha, War Raiders, Sanity, and The Street Profits. There are several combinations of these names that put on genuinely timeless classic tag team matches. The Revival vs DIY at TakeOver Toronto in that 2 out of 3 falls match is in my opinion up there as one of the very best tag team matches in wrestling history, just full stop. So, because of this apparent love for tag team wrestling, I believe it stands to reason that he'll look to do the same in the women's tag division. And arguably, I think he's already been doing that. The number of actual teams since he's taken over has generally increased, with the current division shaping out to have around 8 proper teams on the main roster, as well as a couple of tandems which don't really feel like a full team, but they're at least there to kind of fill out slots. Those teams that actually feel like intentional and proper women's tag teams with at least some element of chemistry include the Kabuki Warriors, Isla Dawn and Alba Fire, Katana Chance and Caden Carter, Ivy Nile and Maxine Dupree, Chelsea Green and Piper Niven, Indy Hartwell and Candice LeRae, Shayna Baszler and Zoe Stark, and finally our new women's tag team champions Jade Cargill and Bianca Belair. And to give you some context as to how significant a change it was from when Tripp started taking over Creative to now, when he initially took the reins, the only one of these teams that was really together was Chelsea and Piper. Prior to that, we had many more cases of a pair of singles wrestlers being a tag team for whatever reason, and for whatever reason, those teams would commonly only be together for a short little while and probably in that little while still win the gold, such as the likes of Nikki Ash and Rhea when they were tag champs, and Zelina and Carmella even. I'm not saying any of those acts are bad individually, but they lack the feeling of being a cohesive tandem. Whereas the teams I mentioned as the current day tag division do feel much more like proper teams. Now that there is a foundation in place which Trips has been gradually establishing for the past year or so, what do we do now and how do we grow the division into something potentially incredible? It's really simple, keep doing what they've already been doing. If the general trajectory for the division is to just keep building and creating teams with chemistry that feel like actual tag teams, that's going to go super far by itself. An additional thing is just having common defenses, where the titles are just chased down by the entire division as a proper set of prizes. And regarding the champions themselves, it's often been said that the title doesn't make the woman, and rather that the woman makes the title. And in the case of the tag championships, that sentiment is arguably even more true than ever. These titles have been abused for years by this point, to where their prestige is basically non-existent. But by doing things like further establishing the division and showcasing them more on pay-per-views, like how they were featured at Backlash when Jade and Bianca won them, it will innately make them feel like a premier championship that is well worth fighting for. But those are just my thoughts. Are the women's tag titles a lost cause and should we simply concede that they're not gonna work out and instead just replace them with mid-card titles? Or is Tripp's gonna be able to dig them out of the hole with the likes of Jade Cargill and Bianca Blair leading the division as champs? Let me know what you think in the comments down below and hey ho, while you're headed down that way, it would be amazing if you leave a like on the video to let me know you enjoyed or found the discussion fun. Also, if you liked what you saw, feel free to check out some of my other videos and be sure to subscribe for more videos just like this one. All that said, I think I'm gonna bow out for now. As always, I hope you stay safe and that was delightful.